All right, this is my next video series looking at Carl Bau's creation in the 21st century. Uh, this episode is called Evolution Expelled uh, and features Dr. Joseph Mastropaolo. Uh, this is going to be, uh, this should be a really good one. Uh, this guy's an, an interesting character uh, and once again, twice in a row now, uh, the second time I've encountered a guest that actually has the degree that that the uh, Bow claims he does uh, is a legitimate degree, not not a made up one. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. I'll get started here. And our guest, an eminent scholar, is going to verify that from the halls of academic fact, evolution has been expelled. Wait, evolution's been expelled from academia? God damn it! You know, if you're listening, lead scientist, you're supposed to keep keep me up. I didn't get the memo again. Okay, it's the second time. I've been screwed over. Nobody tells me what's going on. How can we keep this evolution fraud hoax going if you guys don't tell me what, what, what's expelled and what's not expelled, all right? If, however, by evolution we mean as the common concept is expressed and propagandized, if we mean lower life forms developing gradually or by punctuated rapid equilibria, until we go from slime to PhD. What an amazingly appropriate phrase for Carl Bau to use. Slime to PhD. Or crustaceans to primates. That's right. He said it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the idea of crab monkeys kind of scares the shit out of me. If we mean by evolution a graduation with an increase in genetic information that has never been observed in the fossil record, all the fossil record demonstrates is a fixity of kinds and variation that were all present simultaneously. It has never been observed. Now, I don't know if it's just me or not, but did it seem to anybody else that Carl Bau just got pwned by his own editor? Uh, whoever pieced this thing together and, and added in the graphics, uh, he's sitting there explaining that there's no, no, nothing in the fossil record indicates a, a transition between major kinds while the graphic is showing that famous talk origins lineage which is the the sort of unbroken transition from a very very ape-like organism to a modern human I think that's kinda hilarious my guest today is one of our most qualified guests that I've had over the years and periodically he is asked to return because he has an incredible message to deliver my guest is Dr. Joseph Mastropaolo. Dr. Mastropaolo, it's a delight to have you back on the telecast again today. It's my pleasure to be here, Dr. Ball. You have a background in biology and kinesiology, and you're a credentialed scholar. Tell us what kinesiology might be. Biomechanics and physiology of the human, mainly. Experimental animals, secondarily. So as I said in the intro, uh, just to, to clarify again, Joseph Mastropalo has an actual degree, a real PhD, a legitimate PhD in in a uh, in a physiological science. Uh, it's it's kinesiology, which is as he stated, it's the study of movement. Um, Typically, like kinesiology is the actual uh, research science behind like physical therapy. Um, you know, when 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 people are trying to improve somebody's chances of recovering from accidents and such, uh, physical ther the the science, the sci actual research that went behind what they do comes from kinesiology. So, just to clarify, also things like intense exercise programs, which is uh, really where his area of research has been. Well, to show that you are eminently qualified, in fact, uh, I don't think you have anyone better qualified than are you. To show that you are, there was an experiment run called the Gossamer Albatross, and I watched it decades ago. Uh, I, I watched it with fixity of intent. Uh, who was the lead scientist and designer on that experiment? I blush to say I was. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. Joseph Mastropalo was the, the lead scientist on the uh, Gossamer Condor and Gossamer Albatross project? Well, I didn't know that. Let's look at this interesting documentary. The prize was won by the Gossamer Condor, a unique aircraft piloted and powered by Brian Allen. 
and developed by a team led by Dr. Paul McCready of Aerovironment Incorporated. So what exactly was Joseph Mastropalo's role in the uh, on, in, uh, McCready's project here? Well, it turns out uh, there's an online book. Uh, I, actually, I'm, I think I'm going to buy this book, uh, a hard copy of it. Um, it's called Gossamer Odyssey, The Triumph of Humored Powered Flight that has the whole story of um, how this thing came to be. There's also a documentary. I'll put a link down below uh, to where I got that that clip from. It's a, a short little um, video on, on the Gossamer Condor. And the thing about it, this is what is, well, kind of amazing to me. Uh, it turns out that uh, Joseph Mastropalo was hired onto the project. Get this. He designed the exercise program that uh, the the Brian Allen, the, the pilot, uh, went through. That's what his role of it was, okay? He was the exercise coach on that project. Now, how do you go from exercise coach to lead scientist and engineer? I, 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 I'm not entirely sure how that how that works out. But um, given his excellent qualifications in kinesiology and, and, and you know, designing these workout programs, I was kind of interested to find this section in the book. Um, and I'm not saying this, this, now obviously this is not meant to diminish his, you know, his actual expertise in, you know, evolutionary biology or anything. Um, this is just merely in his own field. Um, listen to this little story. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll, just, I'll read bits. And um... So on the morning of May 21st, Paul, that's Paul McCready, Jogging with Joe Mastropalo, hit a tilted paving slab wrong, twisting his foot sharply. Run on it, Joe suggested. But the more Paul ran, the worse it hurt. Okay, and then you go on. They, they got a physician, Dr. Ingrid Dodd. Okay, Ingrid. Okay, Ingrid inspected Paul's ankle, popped him into a car, and drove him off to an orthopedic specialist in Canterbury. He came back on crutches with a cast on his foot and a broken bone in his ankle. Now, I don't know. Okay, I, I, if I was an expert on human movement and exercise, I, I I would hope, I would think, and I could be wrong. Again, you know, I'm reaching way outside of my area of expertise, but I'm not entirely positive that when you fall and break your ankle, that running on it is the best recommendation. is is really, you know, the best advice that this expert could have given him. But it's just me. Yes, you were. And it, it demonstrated what? It demonstrated that what people had said was impossible to achieve physiologically, that is to fly by one's own power as a human being, which is just barely possible theoretically, that it could not be done because teams all over the world had been trying for 16 years in vain, had not succeeded. They said it couldn't be done. Now, Dr. Mastropalo is not even trying to be honest here. Um, by what he just said there, you would believe, or he's, you would think, uh, that this Gossamer Condor was the very first human-powered flight, that everybody said it could never be done, and then, thanks to his genius in leading this project, it was able to succeed in 1977. Um, but the reality is... Well, it's just a little bit of an exaggeration. Uh, looking at the wiki page on human-powered flight, link down below, uh, the very first human-powered flight, uh, sustained human-powered flight, was in 1935. That's 42 years before the Gossamer Condor. Now, that couldn't take off on its own. It had to be launched. Uh, the first human-powered vehicle that was truly human-powered in takeoff and landing was in 1961. Uh, the Sumpak, and then a week later, the, uh, what, what was it, the, the Puffin, um, both both in England. Uh, they, those vehicles could land and take off, and they, they held, I think the Puffin held the record for the longest flight, about 1,000 meters, until um, the Gossamer Condor broke that record. I believe it was the Gossamer Condor that broke that record. Um, but the point was, is that human-powered flight was not this new novel thing that, that old genius Joe Mastropalo invented, like he's trying to sound like here. We did it by applying a new theory which reconfigured the muscle cell. So with these new reconfigured muscle cells in the pilot engine, the prize was won. Uh, marvelous. Reconfiguring the muscle cell. That's right. That That's a, that's a nice way to say he, he you know, put him on a, on a stationary bike. 
you actually were better qualified than the younger pilot who flew it in many respects. Mostly in age. I was, I was double his age. <laughs> but you were in extremely good health. I was able to put out enough power to fly. This is actually me and the aircraft, so it proves that I had the power to fly. Now that is impressive. I mean, not only did Joe Mastropalo uh, do this highly technical training thing to reconfigure the muscle cells of Brian Allen, the pilot, he actually reconfigured his own muscle cells, making him the only other person in the world with the power to fly the Gossamer Condor. Others helped as test pilots, and after the prize event, a 60-year-old grandmother, an astronaut, a 10-year-old youngster, and several friends all had the thrill of flying using only the power of their own muscles. Which here is setting a world's record by flying for more than an hour. I took this photograph. All right, I'm pretty much uh, done with this albatross portion of it, uh, but I did want to point out um, I thought it was kind of interesting that he had taken that photograph because I'd seen that photo on what, in researching this. It's it's a pretty famous picture, um, and I didn't see his name attached to it anywhere. So I found it at the uh, what is it the NASA Dryden Flight Research Center, uh, where the the original copyright owners of the photo are uh, the archives there. And I contacted their archivist and I asked them if he, they had any idea who the photographer was. And they said that they didn't have any information on the photographer except that. On the and on the in the slot where photographer's name goes, the name Jim was written. So I don't know if Joe goes by Jim sometimes, or if Joe borrowed Jim's camera to take that picture, or if Joe is talking out of his ass. I don't know. If evolution is true, then we're the animals. Yes. If evolution is not true, then we are the stewards. We are not the animals. Yes. What the fuck? Now here is what the ancient Greeks observed. On a milkweed leaf, which had nothing on it, suddenly appears a caterpillar. Where did it come from? Their answer was from Gia, the goddess of the earth, which gave the vitalism through the plant to the spontaneous generation of this worm-like organism. And what did the organism do? It's easy to observe. It spun itself into a chrysalis. What came out? A butterfly. What did they say? They said, this caterpillar evolved into a butterfly. First of all, and this is just a little point of pickiness, the monarch butterfly is found in the New World, not in the Old World, although recently populations have, have been found um, uh, in, in, in Europe. But the point is that... Ancient Greeks did not study the monarch butterfly. They did indeed study other, other butterflies, so your point stands, but nonetheless, it's not that particular one. Um, but anyway, the whole point, though, you're, the, the implication is that the Greeks studying this, this thing believed in some kind of primordial life force that transformed a worm-like thing into a butterfly, and they called it the butterfly evolving from the caterpillar. I don't know if that's accurate or not, um, but the point is, is that that has absolutely no bearing on a modern un Darwinian understanding of evolution at all. Uh, again, evolution never claims that things somehow magically transform during their lives into something else. Uh, cats don't give birth to dogs or whatever, all the other straw men arguments that people want to bring up against evolution. All right, I'm going to go on to part two, so...